A beautiful morning to you and welcome to Super Screen News at 10, reaching you live from our studios in Lagos, Nigeria. I am Blessed Omonose. We're starting off now our first report with the 2019 budget where the Senate and House of Representatives Joint Committee on Electoral Matters have adopted 143 billion naira as a workable budget for the 2019 polls. The committee members rejected the earlier version of the 189.2 billion naira, a combination of 143 billion naira and addition another 45.6 billion naira proposed to be veered from the 2019 budget. The lawmakers said they would stick to only 143 billion naira. The joint committee has sat and uh, has deliberated the position to adopt the 143 billion as presented by Mr. President. And at this point in time, it is also the wish of this committee that INEC represent their budget of 143. You will recall that President Mama Jabari Ad in June requested that the National Assembly transfer the 143 billion naira from projects it inserted in the 2018 budgets. And away from that, British Prime Minister PM Theresa May will this week make a first visit to Nigeria as part of effort amid at boosting post-Brexit trade ties. May, joined by several ministers and 29 business representatives from various industries, will also visit South Africa and Kenya during the three-day trip. She will be the first British PM to set foot in Kenya since Margaret Thatcher in 1988. The delegation will land in Cape Town where May will meet South African President Siri Ramaphosa as well as business leaders and young people. The Prime Minister is also expected to visit Robin Island where former President Nelson Mandela was in imprisoned for decades to commemorate the 100th anniversary of his birth. And now talking politics now, where the chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Mashut Savador, has decamped to the All Progressives Congress, APC. He made the announcement in Lagos with his supporters. I am not very happy to see me abandoning the work I started. Because I started this work with full determination of winning Lagos. But when we are bombarded with the type of leadership that cannot give you encouragement for victory, you have to carry your work to another place where, yes. where it will be recognized and yes. where it will be appreciated. Yes. The last election, APC defeated PDP with just around 100,000. And that is why I was mobilizing heavily to make sure I beat that gap. PDP had 44.96% of the vote, while APC had 51.96%. All other parties, all put together, they had 1.08. Then tell me which party I should go. If you love your people. can get life, I have to take them to where they can get job, I have to take them where they can practice politics. Therefore, they must go to APC. His supporters also speak on his latest move. This is a record that always this party is divided. For the selfish of a one man who says he's above the law of the party. To serve the purpose based by the ruling of the National Working Committee that affirm the executive of which Honorable Mashuk Sabado 
as a chairman of the party of the government. We have waited as a party patiently to occupy Alausa, producing the governor of this state. But each time we work and struggle, labor to get to the seat, we discover that there are some elements, how do I put them? Demonic evils working against our progress, and they truncate this aim at dying minute. But we cannot wait any longer. At this point, we are tired and we've made up our mind. We are leaving the party. But for the first time in the history of PDP, Honorable Salvador came on board, spent all his hard-earned money to revive this party again. Go to the history of this party and ask how many state chairmen has done what Honorable Salvador have done. The answer is no. We are using this opportunity to beg Salvador again. Wherever he goes, we are going. We have been working for PDP for a very long time. And my leader here have done everything possible to make sure that PDP, PDP moves, move on. And in the aspect of non-indigenous, which I represent in Ikorodu, my leader here do spend his personal money to move us forward. But unfortunately, all his effort is not recognized. Can anybody continue to waste his time here? You will recall that the 65% of the PDP who produced Salvador as the chairman have been making efforts to impeach him, but all to no avail. Though the reason given by the 65% for his removal was because he pitched his tent with the 35%. And still on the Lagos PDP crisis, a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and a member of the Board of Trustees, BOT, Olabode Judge, has called on the international community to investigate the death of the late Apapa chairman, Ni Borishadi. have the tools to unmask the person whose voice resonated in obvious sinister directives. In the malice that ensued, hundreds of witnesses saw her bullish Ade, who was a big giant of a godly man, tackled to the floor, pinned down by several men, held down viciously, and then with all his limbs and body virtually chained to the dirty floor. Then one of the murderers fired at point blank range to his kneecap, shattering his limbs in a massive irreparable damage to his kneecap. According to witnesses, for more than 10 minutes, the government stood over the prostrated body of a vastly mutilated written frame of Aborishade, threatening to kill anyone that dared to come to assist the dying man. You will recall that the PDP Lagos State Chairman, Moshud Safado, accused him of being behind a crisis rocking the party. The BOT member of the party was quick to clear the air. Safado came to see me in London and said he wanted to be inaugurating committees. And I said, why don't you meet the other elders, local government by local government? Those who are in 65, they know themselves. Those who are 35, they know themselves. And he himself came through the 65. There were two, or two others who were competing with him. We, you know, the elders sat in a meeting. We, we, we tried to persuade those other two to allow him for continuity purposes. Now, after that, he disregarded the leaders. I wasn't even back. We started listing some names unknown to those leaders in the local government. So who was then causing trouble? I remember, and you can check, the National also called me in London and said, oh God, this is your man. This is what he's, in, uh, he's trying to do. He wanted to have a, a massive rally in Lagos, and they told him, no, you can't hold any rally. That went on twice. They refused. 
And I said, well, any time I come back, we can organize ourselves, hoping to. When I came, we called meetings of elders. What is going on? Everybody started saying, the whole thing is now turned upside down. Away from that, now the campaign office of former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has debunked speculations that the presidential aspirant vying for the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is set to abandon the party. The reaction, which was contained in a statement and signed by spokesperson of the Atiku Presidential Campaign Organization, Apko Shegun Shuemi described the claims as a malicious attempt to confuse the public about the aspiration of Atiku ahead of the forthcoming presidential primary election of the PDP. The campaign office also called on the supporters of Atiku to remain steadfast and see the contrived news of defection as an attempt to distract it from the set talks of winning the PDP ticket and the 2019 presidential election. And still talking politics now, a former Kano State Governor, Rabiu Kankwasu, is set to declare his presidential ambition in Abuja on Wednesday. This was contained in a statement signed by the Kankwasu Presidential Campaign Committee in Abuja. The senator representing Kano Central will make the announcement at a rally to be held at the Eagle Square, Abuja. Kankwasu is also seeking to become the People's Democratic Party, PDP, flag bearer in 2019. You will recall that the former Minister of Defense contested in the All Progressive Congress APC presidential primary in Lagos in 2014. It lost the tickets to President Muhammad Mamadou Buhari. And away from politics now, talking national security, where an appeal has been made to the federal government to make proper provision for the welfare of officers and men of the Nigerian police force, both living and those who died in acting service. This appeal was made by some security specialists at a public presentation of a non-governmental organization, Save a Life Foundation. We don't have compensation for our government security agencies in Nigeria. We have young men in Nigeria. We have people in government security agencies, especially the police, which you're asking of, that can deliver. But you cannot deliver when the government cannot deliver you. You cannot deliver them from their children's school fees. They are supposed to have free education. If the police officer knows that his children, maximum of four, can get education, if he knows that he has insurance, if he knows that he has protection for his family, if he knows that he's given the right motivation and he goes into corruption, which may be possible, then he will blame himself. Now what people are doing is justified biases. People justify their irresponsible action on professional activities by the fact that government left them in the loo. And just look at maybe one corruption case. It can settle a lot of outstanding. Go to the police barrack, go to the army barrack. You will see late personnel of government security agencies that their families are doing prostitution in the barrack to survive. The boys are robbing anywhere they see they're going to arm robbery, cultism, because they want to survive. And the one serving is seeing that. Those behind the foundation set up to save lives of Nigerians express optimism of the foundation support of government efforts. Security is everybody's business and everybody's responsibility, although some people's core function. When we talk of security, we talk of safety. They are intertwined. We have a lot of carnages on the highway. We have a lot of road crashes on the road, it must not be allowed to continue. So when we have little opportunities like this, we try to grab them, utilize them for the betterment of mankind. To make sure that everybody understands, everybody becomes an advocate for good roads, for making sure we rid the roads of reckless drivers, making sure that vehicles that are not roadworthy will not be plying our roads, and then making sure that government holds people who bring in substandard uh, accessories and parts, uh, hold them and, and take them and, and 
to take them to make the law hold, hold them and hold them accountable for the lives lost on the roads before the advent of frsc the traffic crashes were on the high side and that was what led to the formation of or the creation of frsc far back in 1988 and between that time and now we've had so much reduction in road traffic crashes and uh, we are still doing everything we can to make sure that traffic crashes go down to their barest minimum. Most of our crashes occur mostly during traffic, uh, during the holiday seasons because of the high ve uh, vehicular activities that occur this period. And because of that, most time the core marshal and chief executive of the Federal Safety Doctor, uh, Bubuyo Iyemi, always make sure that people are sent to our various corridors where we know that traffic is always on the high side to make sure that they calm down the traffic and at the same time make sure that uh, in case of uh, any traffic crash people are sent there to go and make sure that uh, the uh, rescue activities are carried out and to make sure that uh, there's free flow of traffic. Nigerian youth have been urged to avoid premarital sex and shown intake of drugs. The Director of Family Life Ministry and President of Voice of Joy and Gladness Women International Ministry, Bokola Oladion, gave the advice at a youth summit organized in collaboration with ECOWAS Youth Council in Lagos State. Sex is permitted within the confines of marriage because there is covenant cover and there is safety there. But when youth, like I said, youth have at the advantage power, they have passion, they have strength, they have vigor, they have all that. Okay? Now, when they are engaging premarital sex, they are distracted, their vision is blocked, they can't think straight. And if they are the future of our nation and the society, you know, then we need them to be able to think right and think straight. Uh, sex within the confines of marriage is like a, it douses tension. It's a it's a it's a bond. It's a, it's a cement that binds the, the the marriage together. Any sexless marriage is a useless marriage, as far as we are concerned in family life. You see, but like I said. In, within the confines of marriage and context of marriage, sex is it. But, you know, for an, a youth that is not married, he does not need it. That energy should be channeled towards something more productive. The youth of today now, they believe that taking up drugs is, I mean, uh, uh, it's normal. But with this platform now, we've been able to see people that have been into drug abuse and what, you know, or... Uh, 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 the outcome of the drugs on them. So coming together with Voice of Joy and Glad Ministry is a good platform for us to be able to now to reach out to the youth who feels in I mean uh, intake of drug is normal. Intake of drug has nothing there. Apart from the fact that the drugs has so many you know adverse effects on them, which has to do with you know uh, mental derailing of their mental faculty and all that and all that. We believe the platform Platform would help to satisfy the youth that are taking up drugs should be disengaged. The summit with the theme Sex, Dating, Drugs and Truth was well attended by youth in Lagos State and beyond. The National Broadcasting Commission NBC has appealed to media owners to pay their license fees. The Director General of the Commission, Ishak Mudibu, who made the appeal, said defaulters will face the penalty of being short down. These are members of the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, and media owners across Nigeria, all set for the first media stakeholders meeting in Lagos State. Addressing the forum, NBC Director General Ishak Mudibo expressed sadness over the non-payment of dues and non-renewal of operating licenses. So, when everything is put together, as of this morning, stations are owing $4 billion 368,567,631 million, naira, 67 copper. Well, the implication of this is um, it would make it very difficult for NBC to operate. But above all else, the fact that people have just refused to meet basic obligations to the commission. 
as defined by the act setting up the establishment or the, the commission itself and the basis of the relationship between the regulator and the licensee. We have met quite a number of the licenses over a period because we know that sometimes people are not able to pay the money uh, in one fell swoop. But we, we also opened the opportunity for people to, to work out a payment structure that they would then follow very, in a very disciplined manner. The DG also gave a payment deadline of 15 September 2018 and immediately media owners appeal for grace of extension and review of the license fee. Uh, considering the fact that uh, radio business is uh, actually a social service to the community, I think it is important for the board of the directors and the management of NDC to consider the following points. Number one, the license fee should be quarterly instead of yearly. I think by doing that, it will reduce the budget. So let it be quarterly instead of yearly. The DG should consider forming an economic program where such fee should be reviewed as it comes, as the situation of the country or the economic situation of the country comes, rather than just continue from uh, 2051 popular DG, which has the same fee, and now the same thing on the economic situation of the country is also. Reacting on broadcasting issues, DG called on media practitioners to adhere strictly to the Code of Ethics, especially as the 2019 general election approaches. In the first place, if there are, if there are political activities going on, yes, you can report political activities. But, but if people are particularly doing campaigns before elections and you, and you, you take money to, to broadcast them, are going to be liable. The place of professionalism cannot be underestimated. This will aid standards and control in the industry. Nkiruka Ibe reporting for Super Screen Television. And away from that report, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, we bring you business news. Please stay tuned. Glad to have you back and now to the business scene now where the federal government has released a list of 69 ongoing road and bridge projects in the southeast. Minister of Information and Culture, like Mohammed, who made this known in a statement signed by his aide, Shedden Adeyemi, said, though the contracts for many of the roads were awarded before the advent of the current administration. They were either poorly funded or not funded at all, which is why the project lingered. The minister said the 69 roads and bridges were are spread across the five states in the southeast are now in different stages of completion. According to him, funds were provided for budgetary allocation, the school bond and the presidential infrastructure development fund. And now to Lagos, now still on business, port users have raised their lamp over, over about 360% hike in haulage cost in the last three weeks, resulting from the current traffic log jam being experienced along the Lagos port access route. The chief executive officer at Demetris Logistic, Dotun Oluyori, said 450,000 naira is only being charged for the transporting of goods from Tinkan Island, adding that the haulage cost is higher for goods being taken from from one of the terminals in the main Apapa port, such as APTM to Ibafo. Oluyori said the log jam has cost business owners about 600,000 naira to transport a 40 feet container of goods from the APM terminal in Apapa to Ibafo a distance of just about 89 kilometers. Before now, it has used to cost between 130,000 and 190,000 Naira, respectively. We'll take another short break here, and when we return, we bring you foreign and sports news. Join us again. <laughs> 